how to attract a man in ways he can't resist you. This is for single ladies alone. Men and married women stay away. This is my meet time with the single ladies. Single ladies, trust me, I want to share with you some 10 tips. You will attract your man in ways he cannot resist you. I want to show you how to lock your man in a way he can't resist you and he can't run away to other women. He remains yours for life. I have some 10 tips for you. Before I give you the tips, let me just tell you this. The ratio of men to women globally is one to one. Don't be fooled. Don't be cheated by anybody. That women are more than men. Don't be cheated. Check from credible statistics like, uh, like World Bank and IMF. I'm telling you right now, the ratio of men to women is one is to one. There is a man for every woman. There's a man for you specifically for you. Now, so as I share with you these 10 tips, I'm talking about single men. How to attract single men, not married guys. Don't ever waste your time with a married guy. He's going to use you and dump you. You're going to tow his line. He has another woman. Anyway, his loyalty is with the woman he loves, the woman at home. No matter how wounded he may be, no matter how emotional he is, if he's married, stay away from him. He's a time waster for you. He doesn't love you. He's wasting you. He's using you. So the tips I'm sharing with you is for single men and specifically to lock him in for marriage. Now, trust me on this. Out of the people listening to me, the single ladies listening to me, about 5% will practice what I'm going to teach you. And those 5% will write me a testimony before December next year. Either they are married or engaged. I'm telling you the truth and nothing but the truth. The 5% who are going to practice what I'm going to teach you right now, before December next year, you'll either be married or engaged for marriage. I have talked to many single ladies in different countries and those who followed what I teach, I guarantee you 100% they got their husband. Unfortunately, some of you can't follow what I'm teaching and you will go round and round in vicious cycles used by men. If you follow what I'm going to teach you, whether you have a child or not is immaterial. Whether you have a degree or not is immaterial. Whether you are tall or short, plump or petite, it doesn't matter. Men are attracted by different sizes. Some men like vits, small cars. Others love trucks, huge. Others like tall girls, others short girls. Some love big boobs, others small boobs. Some men like big butts, others like average, others like small ones. Don't be bothered by how God created you. That's beside the point. Whether you have one child or two children or you have no child, whether you have been involved in sex before or not, whether you have broken a relationship or not, whether you are divorced or not, that's not the issue here. It doesn't matter and men don't care. I'm going to teach you what to do and you will be irresistible. Men will die to have you. You will write me an email. Ready? Let's go. 10 tips to make a man look for you, to attract a man and make him never resist your love. 10 tips. Number one, number one, meet men. Don't bury yourself in work, home, work, home. Uh -uh. Go for social interactions. Wherever you can meet a lot of single men, whether in church, whether in parties, whether in hiking, sporting activities. By the way, some sports like hiking, he starts to see the geography of your body and he starts having some ideas. Whether it's kayaking, boring, golfing, whatever sport you do, whether it's going out for movies, going out to watch soccer or rugby, whatever it is, get out of the house. Life can't just be about work, home, work, home, or your children. Come on, you also have a life. Even from a statistics perspective, 
just by law of probability. You enhance your odds when you meet more people. So get out there and meet the man. That's step number one. Number two, be sexy. Come on, girl. Be sexy. I mean that. Men are attracted by what they see. Don't be fooled by anyone. I'm a man. I can tell you this. We are visual by nature. You see, women are attracted by what they hear. Men are attracted by what they see. Always dress hot. Always. Not sometimes. Always. If you're not comfortable with a certain outfit, throw it away. Throw it away. Use your salary. Use your money. Use every means possible to get good clothes. Make your hair. Always. 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 Your nails. Always. Manicure your nails. Perfume yourself. Use makeup if you want. Whatever it takes, dress hot. Men are attracted by what they see. They don't even go beyond what they see. In fact, the Bible is so honest. It's us who act hypocritical. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 21, verse 10 and 11, Moses was advising the young men. When you go to war and you see a beautiful girl and you're attracted to her, take her to be your wife. You see, you're attracted, take her. That's Moses in the word of God advising young men. Deuteronomy 21, 10 and 11. Men are attracted by what they see. If you start seeing staying there, losing shape, eating anyhow, becoming obese, come on. Men are just interested with how you look. Men are sexy by nature. Forget all those things you hear about character. Forget all that. I'm telling you right now, be sexy. Wear that curvy body. Dress hot. Trust me, girls. I know what I'm telling you. I was attracted to my mercy because of her fingers. I was behind her in our CU, in our Christian Union, in the university. She was a couple of pews ahead of me. She lifted her hands in worship, and I just looked at those nails, and my heart went paragasha. I hadn't even seen her face. She knew how to dress to kill. And that's what I'm telling you right now. Be hot. Let your hair fall nicely. Be sexy. Number three. Number three. Drive him crazy. Number three. Drive him crazy. Smile. Smile throughout. We don't smile by nature. Wear that smile. I'm telling you right now. Trust me, my girls. Trust me, my daughters in the Lord. Smile. Smile. Avoid a frowny face. Talk freely. Flow in his conversation. Let him feel the magic you are, the charm. Drive him wild. Hug him passionately. No kiss at all. Yes, no kiss at all. But if he wants to touch you, that's okay. So long as he touches you responsibly. He's not touching your boobs or your thighs or your butts. But if he's touching your shoulders, respond and touch his hands back. Drive him wild. Yeah, I mean exactly that. Hug him warmly, passionately. Let get all his friends to admire you and to praise you. Men are very jealous. When the friends begin to talk about you, to admire you, to like you, he will start fearing losing you to his friends. I know girls who have very good character, but they, can't, they don't even know how to greet a man. They open a conversation very mechanically. They are very prayerful. They have good characters. They are virgins, but nobody comes to them. No man wants a girl whom he doesn't imagine how it feels to romance with her. You see, when a man meets a girl, the first thing he thinks, how will it feel when I sleep with her? He begins to imagine how you will taste on bed. I'm telling you the truth and nothing but the truth. So if a man feels you're boring, you are rigid, you are static. He begins to resist you. Be charming. Be lively. Give him the attention he's looking for. Men like bragging about their job, their car, their house, their physique, their salary, their business. Men like talking about themselves. Men are like kids. It's so easy to deal with them. Flow in his conversation. He wants to feel some praises. Continue. 
giving him those compliments he's dying for. Give him the attention that he's dying for. Number four, number four, number four. Be confident. Men are looking for a confident woman. When he drags you everywhere he wants, he loses taste in you. Be confident. Set strong boundaries. For example, if you're going out with him tonight, it's Friday night right now, and you agree you're going to go home at 10 p.m. Don't extend by a minute. Remind him, no, 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 no. My time has come. I've got to go home. Be firm. Be lively. Flow. During the moment you're together, be very, very lively. Flow in the conversation, but be firm. Never act desperate. That puts off a man. He thinks you're loose. Men fear imagining that everyone else moves with you. So be confident. And, and, and don't imagine this is going to be your husband. Just flow. The person who will marry you may not even be the guy you're thinking about. So be confident. Don't be apologetic about your achievements, about your own life. Don't allow anyone to belittle what you have done or your own achievements. If somebody is positive, continue hanging out with them. If they are negative, block them. Block them. Block them, I mean that. Be confident in your own skin. Don't ever complain about any part of your body or your dressing or your car or your house. Don't believe, you know, some girls make weird mistakes. Oh, my car is so tiny. Even if a guy comes driving a Range Rover, a VX, V8, it doesn't matter. Celebrate your car. Speak as though it is the best car in the whole world. Celeb if you don't have a car and you have to take a public transport home, say it with a lot of passion, with no apologies. Don't apologize for your job. Don't apologize for your level of education. Don't apologize for any part of your body. Don't apologize for your kids. Don't apologize for your past relationships. He has just met you. You didn't cheat on him. He has just met you. Be confident in your own skin. Number five, number five. Number five is a huge one and very tricky. Very tricky. I'm telling you this. Never initiate a call. Never initiate a text. Even after meeting him two, three, four times, don't initiate. Respond to all his calls. Respond to all his texts, but don't initiate. Men are hunters. We get confused when you start hunting. Just imagine in the jungle, if a cheetah was hunting an antelope and suddenly the antelope stops and comes to the cheetah, hunting the cheetah, the cheetah gets confused. The, the predator gets confused. Men are wired to hunt, to pursue. The moment you begin to pursue, he loses taste in you. And women do this to secure the guy. Women do this so that they don't lose the man. The paradox is that you lose him by doing that. Don't hunt for a man. Let him miss your presence. Just reply his text, reply his call. Study his habits. If you realize he's taking a week or two without calling you, that means he's with another woman. Don't try to waste time asking him what's happening. How come you have not called me for so long? Uh-uh, he's not yet your husband. He's not yet your fiancé. He's not yours. I mean, don't try to hold him like he's yours. Let him know. I mean, it's okay. You can stay for a month if you may. You can stay for three months. The moment you act desperate, I guarantee you, you lose the man. And this is the mistake most women make. You meet a man today, you initiate the call, you initiate the text. So that you can get a guy. My goodness. You've fallen in for his trap. Trust me on this. I looked for a woman. I'm not telling you things I didn't do. And there were also girls who were looking for me in college. I was very charming. I've always been a very charming guy. In those days, we used to write letters. If I wrote you a letter, I would have driven you crazy. I'm very gifted in letter writing. Three months after I proposed to Marcel, she thought I'm a joker. She thought I'm a player. She even told me it's over. Believe me when I tell you, I'm very good in writing letters. I'm very charming. I'm very romantic. So I had so many girls who were interested with me when I was in college. Many. I'm telling you the truth and nothing but the truth. But Marcy never showed interest. She would smile with me, hang out with me when I look for her. When I disappear, she would disappear. And I started feeling jealous and I didn't want her to run away from my hands. 
And those who are available for me, I started blocking them. And that's what every man does. Don't try to act desperate. Don't initiate. Let him look for you. Let him remain the hunter. Don't be the hunter. Number six. Please listen to this. Please listen to this. Number six. Never ask man for money. Never ask him for favors. When he becomes your husband, it's no longer his money. It's your money. When you're dating a guy, he has not given you a ring proposing for marriage. He has not put a ring on your finger. Don't feel entitled to anything he has. I'm telling you right now, don't show him that you're in need of him or his help or his support. Let him see you are a different breed. So many single women are looking for favors. They are reminding men about their birthday parties. Come on. Don't ask man about a cake for your birthday or flowers or an outfit. Every woman is doing that. Oh, what will you buy me for my birthday? Forget that. Forget that. Don't, uh, trust me, girls. You are doing the wrong things all the time and wondering why you're not closing in the guy into you. And wondering why you can't lock him. Wondering why you are setting so many traps that don't work. You are setting traps against yourself when you start demanding for favors. You know, gifts are only sweet when unsolicited. Don't ask for the man for any favors. This guy met you when you are 30, you are 35, you are 40. Some of you listening to me, you are 50 and you qualify for marriage this year. I'm telling you the truth. It's never too late to get married. I have seen a 70-year-old woman get married to a 74-year-old man. I have seen women in their 50s, in their 60s get married. Trust me on this. Don't ask for a man for favors, not even to pay for your taxi. A reasonable man, a man who is thinking, a man who is thinking straight. If you don't have a cab, he will offer, he will volunteer. He will pay for your dinner, he will get the cab and pay for you, but don't ask for it. If he pays, thank God. If he doesn't, so what? Carry money for your dinner. It is his job, by the way, to pay for your dinner. It is his job to pay for your cab if he invited you for a date. But don't go expecting. Manage your expectations. Expect nothing from this guy. Ask him for nothing. Let him know you're not interested with his money. If there's no love that is genuine, that is flowing, that is natural, he should take off and look for another number. You are the wrong number. You, you are interested with the whole package. Not draw aways, not change. You want the whole package. Please listen to me, children of God. Single ladies, listen. I repeat again, don't ever ask man for money. Don't tell him to pay your rent. Don't tell him to buy you a pair of shoes or to buy you clothes. That's not a man who deserves you. A real man will tell himself that I need to surprise this girl with chocolates. I need to surprise her with an outfit or a pair of shoes or a watch or some jewelry. I need to pay for her spa or, or, or for her hair. And many men will do that within the third date. Most men will do that. Most men are reasonable anyway. But the moment you start asking, they start avoiding you. You have sent so many men away because of asking for favors. They start thinking you are a gold digger. You are setting yourself up for failure. Don't ask for favors. Let him give you out of his own volition. You may mention about your birthday in a way that it doesn't look like you're asking for a gift. Don't even sound like you're asking for a hint. Don't. Don't. You may invite him, for example. You have your birthday. You have organized with the girls. You may tell him, by the way, don't mention it three months in advance. That one he will know you are trying to look for a gift. Mention it as a by the way. And by the way, next week is my birthday. We will be going such and such a place. Do you want to come? Be confident and pose that question to him. Number seven, number seven. Number seven is the most critical. Number seven is the most critical. Say no to sex until your wedding night. Say no to sex until your wedding night. Hear me, girls. The moment you sleep with that man, he begins to imagine how many other men sleep with you. 
The moment you sleep with a guy who has not married you, no matter how good your intentions may be, he begins to believe you're loose and he fears if he marries you, you will easily sleep with other men. The moment a man knows he can't sleep with you, he begins to respect you. He begins to see you as wife material. Men know the line between a call girl and a wife material. No man wants to share his girl with any other man. So if he sleeps with you before his covenant with you, before the wedding vows, before his wedding commitments, his marriage commitments, he knows you can sleep with another man with no commitments. He knows you can engage in casual sex anytime. Trust me on this, meet in the public. Never, 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 never go to his house. Never, 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 never allow him to meet you in your house. Unless there are many people in the house. You're with your girlfriends, you're with your brother, your sister, and you're not taking him to your bedroom at all. It's a no-go zone if he has not put a ring on your finger. I was given this ring by mercy. 29th of March, 2009, she wrote her name inside this ring. I dated her for four and a half years. Four and a half years. No sex until our wedding night. Many men and women were sleeping with each other in college. And most of them never ended up marrying. And some of them married and they divorced. Why? Trust was broken. And you cannot regain trust. Once it's lost, it's lost for good. Never. What you do as a girl, tease him, flirt with him, touch his cheeks, let him come for it. Leave him yearning for more. Don't be rigid. Don't be stingy. Don't be static and rigid. Ah, lose it up, girl. Come on, lose it up. Let him touch you so long as he's not touching you. The boobs, the thighs, the butts. Shoulders, hands, and also touch him back. Leave him feeling like he's going to die for you, but he cannot get your sex. You don't negotiate about sex when you're in his house. You don't negotiate about sex when you are in his house. You don't negotiate about sex when you get into a guest house. Discuss these things ahead and let him know you don't believe in premarital sex. You don't believe in casual sex. You respect yourself. If he doesn't respect himself, too bad for him. Too bad. For you, you have your own non-negotiables. You have your indivisible minimums. This is a no-go zone. It's a deal breaker. It's a red line that no dude can cross. You know what? No man will leave you if you do that. <laughs> Once he tastes you, he can move on. He can move on. And that's why even when you're dressing, dress in such a manner, you expose a little bit of dice, but not too much. When you're naked, we don't want to see you again. What we don't see is what makes us keep on looking for you. So if you put all your breasts outside, what else are we looking for? So do it in such a manner we can only see a little bit of your cleavage. We can't see everything. And we are asking ourselves, what is beyond those clothes? What is beyond that outfit? That's what makes us to hunt. So flat with him, tease him a little bit, but no sex. And the only way to avoid sex is to meet in public. Public means in the presence of other people. And it is safest in restaurants. Because you know some people can trick you. You can go to his house when there are other men or other women. And then he has organized with these guys. When she comes, you tactically disappear. And then I'm left with her only. Don't act silly. You're smarter than that. Use your common sense and your discernment spirit. Meet in public, meet in restaurants, meet in parks, meet in places whereby he will be too shy to go beyond what is acceptable in the public. No sex until the wedding night. If you lose him, you didn't lose him. If a man threatens you that he doesn't want you if you can't have sex, let him go. That kind of a guy, even if he sleeps with you, he won't stay with you. Do you know why so many marriages are in turmoil and chaos? It's because of premarital sex. They engage in sex with no covenant, with no marriage commitment. And so they have never trusted each other, their entire marriage. People who rush into sex before marriage, even if they get married, 
they end up with a very sexless marriage because they are always suspicious of each other. People who wait for each other until they get married, these are the guys who enjoy sex in marriage. Why? They trust each other. They are not suspicious of each other. They are daily roaring on each other. Roasting each other in bed. That's the kind of a marriage you're looking for. A marriage that is full of romance. I feel so good when I'm massaging my mercy. Sensual massage. Allowing my fingers and my hands and olive oil all over her body, touching her inner thighs. Her boobs, massaging her, preparing her. Because she's my princess. I waited for her for the right time. That's the kind of a man you need. Number nine, number nine. Oh no, number eight, sorry, number eight. Ten tips, number eight. He number eight, hang out with different boys. Don't allow this guy to cap at you. He's not your husband. Don't allow him to cap at you unless he has told you straight, will you marry me? Before he proposes, do not allow him to tie your life, to lock you up. Let him know you are meeting other guys. Let him feel jealous. If I tell him openly, oh my goodness, in our place of work, we will be going out to this city and we are hanging, hanging out for a camping picnic. Do you want to join us? Let him know. Don't agree to see one guy unless he makes commitments. See two, three, four people. Enhance your odds. That's the law of probability. So don't meet one guy. You never know whether he's going to waste your time for six months. You don't know whether he will commit or not. So don't tie yourself with a guy who has not told you he wants to marry you. Women make this blunder all the time. They work with assumptions. A guy calls you for coffee date two, three times. And there you think, oh my God. And you go tell you know, your girlfriend, I think this guy has a crush on me. I this, this guy wants me. Who told you? When a man has not spoken, don't interpret it. Love never spoken is not love. Number nine. Number nine. Be in good company with the girls. Hang out with girls of dignity and character. Men will judge you after the manner of girls you hang out with. Men will make the judgment depending on the girls around you. If a girl is full of poison and venom, she's a gossiper, she's negative, get her out of your way. Block her. Someone who is full of negative energy will just spoil your life. If you meet a woman who is always talking bad about men and marriage, stop meeting her. You know what? You will never rise above your self-talk. If you expose yourself to negative energy from other girls, you will continuously form a resistance towards men. Men are good. Men are nice. Men are lovely. One man may have hurt you. One man may have broken your heart. But that doesn't mean 3.5 billion men are bad. No, uh, uh, uh. Men are good. Out of 100 men, there may be 10 men who are not good. 10% at most. Guys are good. They are lovely. They are nice. They are responsible. You have one or two or three people who are not very nice. But don't try to generalize and say guys are not good. Uh-uh, don't do that. So here is the deal. Always ensure you're in the company of other good girls. Girls who are looking for a husband. Girls who are talking great about men. Girls who are encouraging you to get married. Girls who are positive. Girls who are working. Not idols. Not idol women. Not busy bodies. Hang out with people of character. People of value. You are always judged after your own kind because birds of a feather flock together. So be in good company with other like-minded girls. Number 10 and the last one. Pray. Pray. God already knows your husband. God knows your type. God knows the exact guy that you need. God searches the heart of men and is going to expose the crook when you pray. I'm not saying you do the other nine things and then later you pray. No, you do it concurrently. In your search for men, mix these things up. It's not like one following the other. Integrate it. Meet men, be sexy, drive him crazy, be confident. Don't initiate a call. Never ask him for money. Say not to sex until you get married. Hang out with different boys, not one guy. Be in the good company of girls as you pray. 
Prayer answers everything. The greatest challenge with most women right now is not unanswered prayers. It's unprayed prayers. And I'm asking you, have you ever taken three days of prayer and fasting for your marriage? Please decide I'm not going to take breakfast and lunch for three days. I'll be taking dinner only after six. I'm going to pray and fast and seek God's guidance and God's direction. And make specific prayers. God, I'm looking for this guy, six feet, maybe dark skinned. I'm looking for this guy who is an accountant who is working. I'm looking for a God-fearing guy, a man who will take care of our children, a man who will love me, a man who will be home with us. I'm looking for a guy who is sexy and romantic, a man who will be taking me out for holiday, a man who will compliment me. I'm looking for this guy. Oh God, that's my taste. Jesus said, if we've been evil, we human beings been evil, we know how to give good gifts to our children. When they ask us for bread, we don't give them a rock. When they ask us for fish, we don't give them a snake. How much more shall our Holy Father give good gifts to those who ask him? And then he said in Matthew 7, 7, Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened for you. Your man is just a prayer away. You'll be surprised how much God wants to bless you. But you're not asking him. You're not praying. You're not seeking him. I'm asking you today, take some three days of prayer and fasting and be very specific. God, I'm looking for this type of a guy, a guy who is working or in business, a guy who is God fearing, a guy who will love me for who I am, a man who respects women, a man who will honor my mother, my father, my sisters, my brothers, a man who is dignified. That's the kind of a guy I'm looking for. Hey, listen, there's a lady listening to me right now who is going to write to me a testimony before the end of this year. I'm telling you right now, I'm speaking in the spirit in Jesus name. Your man is on the way. I'm speaking to you. I'm prophesying to you, you, you listening to me right now. God has ordained this man. He's going to look for you. You're not even going to look for him. And this is your season. This is your time. Be still and know he is God. He makes all things beautiful in his time. This is your hour for a breakthrough. This is your hour for a miracle. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive him in the name of Jesus. This is your season for a miracle. God has had your prayer. God has done it for you. In fact, Take a thanksgiving offering to your church and tell God, I want to thank you for this is already an answered prayer. Learn to go to church with a thanksgiving offering. Take it to your church where you worship in your local church and that is a thanksgiving offering to tell God in advance, thank you for my marriage. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my husband who is coming. Speak it like it is a reality. God calls things that are not. As though they are. Speak it as though it is a reality. Say it. The way God speaks things that are not as though they are. Receive it. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. You are blessed. Wow, wow, wow. Are you blessed? Are you glad you came? Please share this video with your friends. Share this video with other single ladies. You are blessed to bless. Please share this video with other single ladies.